Welcome into the DMBR Buffs podcast. My name is Jake Schwanitz. Today I am joined by RK as always, and we've got Hank back. Uh, before we get into the show, we are presented by the American Raptors. Uh, the American Raptors are Rugby Town USA's newest rugby team. Head on over to AmericanRaptors.com. Grab your free ticket. If you are unable to make a game, they stream all their games on that website. That's AmericanRaptors.com. Gentlemen, welcome into the show. How are y'all doing? Um, good. I'm doing good. I, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm upset about a few things. We'll, we'll get to all of them. But neither of them have to do with the fact that the Buffs lost by 50 or whatever they lost by the other day. I love that it's just whatever. Like, you can't even really remember. It's like, yeah, 48, 47. Well, they all run together up there. I was, so I did watch along Saturday and Sunday. Oof. Maybe a flex that I work seven days a week. Yeah. Um, Grinder. And it's crazy because Sunday was obviously a better contest. I'm not going to say a better game. Yeah. Um, and I was telling someone, I was like, man, the Buffs watch long was like actually way more fun because there was never any stressful moments. So you right. and I were just like bullshitting about football <laughs> yeah. for three and a half hours. Yeah. It was great. Whereas the Broncos game, I had to like process my feelings and thoughts and stress and anxiety while also talking mm -hmm. it was it was intense so i actually the buffs watch along i had a blast I, real quick on the buffs watch along just go watch the first 30 seconds that about says it all because it's right <laughs> on the first <laughs> offensive play of the game hank you were there though can you tell oh, us a yeah. bit about give us the boots on the ground experience for us it's a, uh, it's interesting you know because you know exactly what to expect. Like, nothing that happened came as a surprise, which is disappointing and all that. Strip sack, a lost strip sack on the first play <laughs> after doing it the, the week before has to be surprising. See, but that was what I was going to say. It's uh, like, well, it happened the week before, so how surprised can you really be? It's like, you see it and you're like, oh, this again, this again. So it's like, I wouldn't have put money on it, but when it happens, you're like, yeah, of course, we knew how this game was going to go. Of course, this is how it starts. But yeah, like, you walk in there, there weren't a lot of Buffs fans. There, there just weren't, which, like, I'm not, I've never been to a road game. Oh, that's not true. Never been to, like, a road, non-conference, like, whatever, Minnesota. Right. I get why people wouldn't travel, but also the team has to play a part, so I can't compare that. But you get I, I know there. a lot of my friends were planning on going, la like, when the game was on the schedule, huh. it was like, we usually always pick one, and you mm -hmm. usually pick the marquee uh, non-con game if you can, and then yeah. after last season, everyone was just kind of like, eh, that's, I'm going to save my money. Totally. You get in there and, you know, you start by saying, like, okay, we know what's going to happen. Like, it is whatever. Like, my girlfriend had, like, a friend who came with who's like, so is Colorado good? And it's like, well, <laughs> you know, the newspaper said it was going to be 3410. Like, we're going to, good. <laughs> we're going to, like, cling to that. You know, maybe it's within 24. But yeah, so it's just brutal from start to finish, obviously. Like, you see him run out there. You're just like, oh, these guys are much bigger. They're much bigger. Like, that's obvious. The offensive line's massive. You got like the old guys sitting next to us. One guy who doesn't know football, the other's like a season ticket holder. And third quarter, he's like, Yeah, so, you know, back when they scheduled this game, you know, they, they thought it'd be a pretty even match. Like, you thought that this was going to be a pretty competitive game. You know, Colorado, I'm not really sure what happened. I'm just sitting there like, Let me tell you, bud. <laughs> let, me, let me tell How you. How much time do you have? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that three point, and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, I mean, it was, it's what you expect. Did you stay the whole game? Yeah, to the finish. Wow. Saw every snap. What yep. a guy. Saw Owen McCown come so close yes. to scoring that touchdown. The funniest thing is we had the watch long going, and we were waiting to, to rotate in the Rams guys for their watch long. Mm. And I was like, okay, if Owen McCown comes out, you have to let us have this drive. And <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to happen at uh -huh. all. And then I like see someone go in there, and I'm like, all right, it's a white guy. He looks smaller than Trevor. <laughs> that's him. That's him. Sorry, guys. You got to let us have this. So then... They go for it on fourth and two. Uh -huh. Inside zone, Charlie Offerdahl does not gain a yard. No. <laughs> does not gain a yard. And so I'm like, all right, end the stream. And we walk away. And then I look back into the refs just like, first down. I'm like, what? So we missed the last uh -huh. few um, uh, throws from our guy Owen McCown. Did you get to watch him, though? We did watch okay. him. just wasn't on the watch long. People like tweeted at me. They're like, I can't believe you guys ended. That I was know. the best you guys. Yeah. Like, I wanted to see you guys There's react hope. to that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you look good. I, uh, he, he looked good. He looked good. He I mean, those fine. throws were a we'll little talk bit more off target, him. you know, but yeah. there's we'll, something to build off of. We'll get to him in a bit. There's still a lot to get to. Ryan, oh, yeah. you mentioned you are upset, and that's what we're going to lead with. What is going on in Buff Nation? Rick George released a statement 
on Sunday, right before I think the Broncos game ended. Yep. Um, talk about a Sunday news dump. <laughs> Uh, his statement, I mean, you can sum it up for us, Ryan. Give us your thoughts. Well, the main thing that really bothered me was, I guess this. If you're so bad that you have to release a statement about how bad you are, you know what's happening here. And I believe uh, it was Jeremy Pruitt, Florida, I think that's his name, uh, Florida athletic director who once said, What will be done eventually must be done immediately. And you know where I'm going with this. It's the Carl, like no one in the world, except for maybe Carl, and I don't even know if he believes that this is going to end well for him at CU. And so, you know, I think one of the reasons why I'm mad is because I won't name any names, but was told that there might be something coming down on Sunday. Yep. And so I was like, wow, they might actually, you know, have the balls to do this. And I understand there's mm-hmm. financial uh, stuff in between. But I was like, maybe they got, you know, someone who's re- willing to come in and help pay for this. And then it comes out with this like weak ass, half assed vote of confidence that is essentially just like, please come to the game. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, we hope it's going to get better. We know it's going to get better. Like, do it for the kids. Yeah. And so that's what bothered me is like, don't. Don't, don't do this now like it was almost like a slap in the face to just be like hey i know it looks bad but it might not be always and it's like come on man we know what's going on here you just had to release a statement about how bad your football team is just watch your game i mean what the, there's been no competitive football no and, and well first half against tcu yeah we will Maybe always first have half of that Air Force, too. Yeah, yeah, uh, kind of. A couple things go different. You knew the yeah. offense was never scoring enough points to win that game. That's true. But exactly. Like, it's just, it's sad. Like, again, we know what's going to happen. There's no reason, I think, to put out a statement like that. Like, there's just no re- You're just asking for more vitriol. Like, well, unless your thought is, like, we're going to put this out. Everybody can scream at us because of that. And hopefully they get it all out and we can kind of move forward from here doesn't seem worth it like you just let me just read the statement yeah it's not okay. that long why not dear buffalo supporters like all of you i've been disappointed to watch our football team struggle this fall most recently yesterday at minnesota i know that our coaches and student athletes are capable of so much more than that uh and all of you deserve better results i want you to know that i hear you i recognize and understand your disappointment and frustration and perhaps even anger uh, we have not come close to meeting our expectations this season, and we own that. I know that Coach Durrell, our coaching and sports staff, our student athletes are working hard to get us on track. And with conference play starting this Saturday, we hope you will all enjoy a home victory over UCLA. Regardless of your feelings right now in Colorado football, I encourage you to continue to support our tremendous football student athletes who need your cheers, encouragement, and support now more than ever. Go Buffs, Rick George. And actually, now reading it out loud, it's so much more clear to me that. It essentially says, yeah, we want to fire him too, but we can't afford to. At least that's what I'm getting. And almost the continue to support is like, we're going to need that money later, (laughs) just so you know. Um, (sighs) And again, it just comes down to imagine having to release a a statement about how bad you are. Totally. And I guess you didn't have to, but you chose to because you could feel that every person is saying this is not okay. Well, it's just completely tone deaf, right? I mean, you go on social media, you go on Twitter, any type of buffs topic that's being talked about uh, football-wise, and it's just flames just all over the place. Everyone is so angry with what's going on. All this did was actually stoke the flames, I feel like. Yes, it did. It really did. I mean, look at the replies and the quote tweets. Those are There's not anything positive to come from any of that. The one piece is the, I hear you. Like we hear, that, that is the one thing where you can at least acknowledge, like, yep, you're all upset. We know you're upset got that filed away but again like that was kind of assumed that at some point somebody well, said hey rick people are not happy right now and and to give rick george credit for one thing i think he's always done a pretty good job of listening to the fans yeah um i remember one of his first years on the job he came to our tailgate and just said like hey what's on your guys's mind you know uh and someone said like i hate the csu game like i think it's stupid mm-hmm. that we have to go to denver for a football game mm-hmm. and like what happened like they got csu off the schedule you know and they they did go back to uh, Texas A and M for that game, but I yep. believe that was a prearranged thing. I think so. You couldn't get them for a home and home, so yeah. it was like a home and neutral, but basically home. So you split the sales or whatever. Essentially, um, so I think Rick George has done a good job of listening. I think he obviously could do a better job. I I feel people are 
selectively forgetting that he's made one hire at head coach before this, and it was a really good one. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that he's done a great job on the whole, mm-hmm. but it means that he's now one and one or one for two on hiring coaches. And this last one was a really unfair position for him to be in uh, in terms of when Mel Tucker let them know he was leaving. So a little bit of both. I will say that I that tone deaf is the right word for this statement, which is just like, no one cares. Like, you yep. are not, you don't get to say anything right now other than we're firing Carl Durrell and get any sort of mm-hmm. positive, um, you know, response from anyone. Yeah. And I'll, real quick, go ahead. The, the piece about like, hopefully we beat UCLA, it's like, Come on, like, like, right, like, that, like come, almost made it worse. Come on, yeah. like, no, just leave, leave that out. And again, like, you hope it happens. I'll be, I'll be sitting down there in the bar watching the game, saying, "Oh, I hope so." Last week, what I threw ten bucks on the on the buffs because I was like, "Oh, I'm going to game." Throw ten bucks on. Threw turn a ten dollar free bet on it. Yeah, turn mm-hmm. into one eighty. Why not? Like, <laughs> like, yeah. But that, that's it's. Hopefully, we beat the buffs. Like, uh, come, or beat UCLA. It's like well, it's not. It's it won't it won't happen. Let's pivot to the other side of this. Darrell's response on Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, was lukewarm at best, I'd say. Can I ask you, what was the question that was asked? Um, I mean... Like, have first, you seen the... Yeah, st- first question was just your response to Rick George's statement. Have you met with Rick George? What were those conversations like? And it was, I mean, it was coach speak, man. Um, you got a lot of, we're practicing really hard. We're trying. We know we're in a tough situation. After this press conference, I'm heading back into the film room type of stuff. I mean... I, I don't know what he's really supposed to say in that situation, honestly, but yeah. I don't think it's anything encouraging for Buffs fans. Well, what's weird is that Carl Durrell didn't really need to respond to that statement. It didn't say anything about him, mm-hmm. you know? And so I was curious if, the, if, like, the question really should have been, like, how do you feel about your athletic director having to release a statement about how bad your team is? Uh, which yeah. obviously isn't going to happen. I know how local <laughs> media works, and there's only a few of you guys in there. Um, but... He didn't, I mean, he should have just been like, yeah, the statement is the statement, you know, like that's what it is. Um, But obviously he feels pressure to explain this. What's so interesting to me is that the COVID year is obviously fluky in many ways, Mm -hmm. but Carl Durrell, that's his first year, which already, you know, set him back in, in ways Mm -hmm. he comes out and looks like so competent as a football coach. Um, The buffs go four and one in the regular season. They obviously lose in the Alamo Bowl to the, to Texas, but man, if you didn't think then like, wow, recruiting is going to be a question mark, but it seems like this guy can coach in like every second since then mm-hmm. has said something different. And I just, I'm just curious like where it all went wrong for Carl. I think that's a great question. I don't think we'll really get those answers for a while. I think something else that, sort of rubbed salt in the wound over the weekend was the fact that Arizona State fired Herm Edwards. He was basically fired Mm -hmm. on the field. I mean, did you guys see that video? Yeah. Yeah, I wonder what that was. I wonder what that was. If it was just like, hey, going to need to talk to you after the press conference. Yeah, I think so. Or what? Maybe. So do we think CU pulls the plug anytime soon like Arizona State did? Or is this just kind of waiting out this year? Uh, Comment from Garrett said, uh, best thing for the team, long-term health of the program. Is it to win or to not win a game this year is that really the best course of action i mean winning you gotta find i mean i don't think it's gonna happen but if but you're tied to Darrell, i mean you you can still move on like like i it's not like they're gonna turn around and go nine and three that's a good point yeah. like if they if they turn this into three and nine nobody's saying like oh you know what actually let's give carl yeah. one more year you know that that's that happened with dan hawkins once and it was catastrophic I well, I no, don't I'm think just saying. Like, I don't think, I think they happen. learned their yeah. lesson, which is like, yeah. Well, maybe we should give him one more year, and it was a buy, it was a financial decision, mm-hmm. and I think what Rick George and the rest of the people in charge up there have to realize is that, well, what is it, seven and a half million yeah. dollars? Mm-hmm. It's a lot of money to pay a coach yeah. to go away. The damage that you could do long term by not making that move is exponent potentially exponentially greater um you know not just in terms of recruiting which obviously no one in their right mind is committing to this staff to play Mm -hmm. uh in the future unless they just love cu and they don't care but in terms of like carl Durrell winning over a kid and being like come play for me anyone any other coach in the conference is gonna that wants that kid is gonna say hey dude that guy's getting fired like 
ASAP. So that's a problem. The attendance is going to be a problem, and I think we're going to see it for the first time in a while this Saturday. And I'll give them a little bit of break that it's a game time thing. Like, Mm -hmm. people, you know, you got to wake up early. I'll be doing it. But a lot of people are going to say, I'm not, you know, the best part's tailgating anyway. Right. Taking that away from me. Um, So you're going to see a weak crowd, and they're only going to get weaker as the Mm -hmm. season goes on. And that's going to make a financial impact. Um, But more than anything is this fan base is beyond at their wits end. It is left and right. I have friends telling me I I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Uh, And you have to do something to try to keep them around. You cannot like you cannot have full apathy from your fan base. And we are dangerously close to that, you know, and. What's crazy is Mel Tucker did such a great job of getting it back. And then him leaving sent us actually further back than we were before that he got here. Cause it was just like, wow, even when you do it right, we can't get it right. So you got to make a move soon before you just lose people forever. You know, all it mm-hmm. takes like you take something out of your schedule and stop caring about it and realize that, wow, I have some more time to do things right now. It's hard to go back. Mm-hmm. We saw a lot of those people in the in the watch along too, um, coming mm-hmm. in saying that they just turned the game on and it was forty two seven. They weren't surprised. Yeah, Hank, do you have any final thoughts before we move on to UCLA? I mean, I don't. Know. I mean, when we were out of town, one of the things. So my girlfriend has a friend who we visited who also went to CU. Big CU fan, big football fan, and she made a bet. My girlfriend said that Colorado will have a postseason win in the next thirty five years. And the other friend said, no, it's not going to happen. But the fact that that's even like a conversation, like 35 years. That's stupid. I'll take that bet all day. There we go. We love the optimism. We just flip things around. But yeah, I mean. They were in the postseason two years ago. Now they haven't come close to winning that game. It's just so tough. The apathy is like obvious. Like it's been that way for at least since the end of last year. Probably maybe even before last year. The transfer exodus is what really set <sighs> yeah. off the app. Yeah, and it's also part of the reason they, they haven't played much competitive football yet. Yep. But you also look at Nebraska just moving on from Scott Frost, just pulling the trigger. It's mil. over. Time to pull it off. Yes, with a $7.5 million difference doing it then versus three weeks later. That's what they're talking about. And they seven are, and a half million for three weeks. And they We're talking bl- $7.5 million for three years. Right, and they bl- they got blown out. Yeah. The next week. Like, that was the craziest thing for me is I was like, okay, well, use Scott Frost as a blame, uh, you know, a sacrificial lamb because mm-hmm. you're going to get killed by Oklahoma. But I think that Nebraska is so delusional that they thought, like, we got to fire Scott Frost so we have a chance against Oklahoma. <laughs> well, Which they, is wild. They lost by 35. Last year, I think, what was it, six games they lost by 34 combined points. So uh, <laughs> you see the effect right away. Before we move on to UCLA, I want to tell you about our friends over at DraftKings. The NFL action is in full swing here at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. We're talking touchdowns, big plays, and even bigger wins. New customers can bet just $5 on any NFL team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. To make things even sweeter, you can throw down on stepped-up same-game parlays once per game day all season long. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code DMVR to get $200 in free bets if your team wins. When you place a $5 bet on any football game, that's code DMVR only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Also, shout out to Athletic Greens. Our next partner has a product I use literally every single day because it's football season and there's just not enough time anymore. Uh, Athletic Greens has 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash buffs. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash buffs to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Moving on to UCLA, Ryan, you have another thing you're upset about. Um, CU is giving out gold shirts to try and get students in the stands this weekend. Let's hear it. That's a lie. They are not giving out gold shirts. They are giving out yellow shirts. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, and, um, this is a trivial thing to be upset about, but I've been banging this drum for years, so I'm going back to the well. That is not gold. The University of Colorado has the great, great pleasure mm-hmm. to use actual gold in their colors. Uh, only a few schools do it right, and black and gold is the greatest combination of two colors that you could ever have. Um so why? 
Why would you undermine that by printing yellow shirts to give to everyone? There's so many schools who do this wrong. Missouri thinks they're gold. No, you're yellow. Cal <laughs> thinks they're gold. No, you're yellow. Uh, I could go down the list of all these teams who think they're wearing gold and are actually wearing yellow, but they don't want to say, oh, Arizona State. They say maroon and gold. Nope, maroon and yellow. Uh, so all these teams are are wearing poverty gold, <laughs> and you get to wear real gold. <laughs> And now you're going to give out a bunch of ugly yellow shirts for everyone to wear. Does it matter to you that they're wearing the gold against a team that also has gold as a color? <laughs> That's a good point. The right gold as well. Um, uh-huh. Theirs is a little off. It has like too much green or something in it. But like um, for this one, should be like a blackout or whiteout. Versus right. Versus like, oh, Correct. you're playing yes. the blue team. There yes. you wear the gold. You want to, yeah, exactly. You, you don't want to like make them blend in with you. You mm-hmm. want to make it like powerful you have in my opinion every game should be a blackout yes i do agree with that just wear black every game it looks so Mm -hmm. cool when the whole stadium's in black and it's obviously the the best looking color shirt of the options they have everybody has it yeah everyone has a black shirt just go black every single game i actually know that a lot of people disagree with me on this because like the old days this was a, a shirt they used to always give out a yellow shirt to the students when they became a freshman and so then all the students would wear those to the game and so that was like the, the, col- the official color of the student section. Um, hmm. And it looked so ugly that I just don't understand why ev- everyone liked that. So wear black every time. Don't give out yellow shirts. End rant. Does Minnesota get any uh, bonus points for their gold? They had nice gold helmets. Yeah, see, that they understood the assignment because they are like, <laughs> oh, we wear yellow, but we want to wear gold. So we're going to make these chrome gold helmets. Okay, fair enough. Um, we'll make picks on the game at the end of the show. But transferring over to the game, uh, UCLA is a team that has struggled at Folsom Field in their previous uh, few trips to Boulder. Um, since joining the Pac-12 in 2011, CU is 8-3 and three versus UCLA. But at Folsom Field, they have won the last three against UCLA. Do we have any hope this weekend, guys? <laughs> Who's the starting quarterback? Well, we can just jump into that, mm-hmm. too. I mean, if you want to talk to quarterback, uh, today Carl said that all three are in play once again. Did Let's not go. Name a starter. Let's yep. go. I love it. Um, because I am a insane person, uh, if you told me that Owen McCown is starting, then yes, I will say I have hope. Um, <laughs> because I have two eyeballs, uh-huh. if you told me that either of the other two quarterbacks are starting, I will say no, I have no hope. Well, I mean... I think we're expecting kind of musical chairs again then. Because, oh, well, of course, yeah. I mean, he said all three are <laughs> yep. in play. And he one, said all three are going to play. Okay. Well, in, in play. play. Oh, in play. In play. In okay. play. Um, but going back to, I guess, Saturday after the game, obviously it was musical chairs at the quarterback position. When asked about it, uh, Darrell kind of looked back on it and said it wasn't the right approach. Yet here we are again this week, and we're going in with basically the same approach. Oh, you think just mindlessly rotating the quarterbacks isn't the right approach? Uh, some would say. <laughs> we were sitting there on on the watch long, and I was just like, is this really what they're doing? Just every other drive, someone gets a chance? Neither of them did anything to say like, ah, yeah, you know what? Let's give him the next drive. Like, I, I think maybe the plan I, was rotate till somebody builds some momentum, and then there's just nothing. Right. Um I think the best drive of the game was the second to last offensive series before Owen got in there when they were doing the rotation. And it was JT who like completed a few passes and moved the ball down the field just a little bit. Uh, and that was like, okay, I guess he did the thing. And then the very next drive was Owen, which yep. was awesome. Um, and that ended up, do you know that in that game or in that one drive, Owen McCown amassed more yards than J.T. Shrout in the last two weeks combined. J.T. Shrout and Brendan Lewis, he outgained gained them in that game combined. For the last two games? Not the last oh, two games. Oh, just in that, in game. that yeah. game. In seven attempts. Yeah. it's There was a drop in there, too. There was. There was. So, I mean, it is, like, if you're Carl Durrell, I just don't understand why you wouldn't be saying, I'm putting it all on this kid. Now, it's a, it's a, maybe a little bit selfish, but it's also clear mm-hmm. that he is a competent thrower of the football, so you're you know you you can at least defend that. And if you're Carl Durrell, you're saying the only way that my job gets saved, which it might already be gone anyway, but the only way it gets saved is if I play this kid and he has magic, and we pull out 
a couple wins against teams that we actually have a chance, and then like a, a monumental op- upset. I'll yeah. Go ahead, I, Hank. So going into that game, I was thinking play Ole McCown the last four weeks. That that means you save the red shirt year. You're also giving him more time to get ready, obviously, but also you don't leave him in there too long because I worry that if you start him starting right now, he's got nine weeks just to take a beating and mm-hmm. throw sixteen picks and ten touchdowns, and you're just like, ah, oh, well. He's what we got. Like, that's just not good for a kid's confidence. At the same time, though, you don't really have another card to play. Yep. And and again, like, you can't expect, you know, me and Will Sherman have started having these, like, 10-minute debriefs once a week to talk about the Buffs game. Now that he's on the Broncos practice squad, and we're talking about today, like, there's just no solution to the problem. Like, there's nothing you do where you're just like, oh, I think they're going to be competitive now. I guess you can throw Owen McCown in there. And just see what happens. Like, give them a chance. It'd be fun. But, like, they can't move the ball, Hank, yeah. at all. Oh, yeah. So, like, oh, Owen McCown completing a couple passes is enough for me to say, like, mm-hmm. he might be able to move the ball. He might be able to score a legitimate touchdown. Do they? Yeah, they have. Do they have one passing touchdown this season? Uh, JT got one, yes. He got the one against TCU, yeah. and mm-hmm. then I think he got one last week. Oh, okay. Jeez, I really do just blank these games out of my memory <laughs> yeah. after they happen. It's understandable. Um, so there you go. Like that. That to me is the, is your own. You're right. It's the only card left yep. to play. You have to play it, right? Absolutely. Well, I'll give you some perspective. Just talking to Brian Howell at practice, um, and one on JT, one on Owen. First on JT, he still hasn't really had an opportunity just to be the quarterback. He's had to deal with Brendan Lewis and Owen McCown over his shoulder the entire time and when he does get in the game it seems like he's on a short leash besides that air force game where it's in weather um on the road and just not having that short leash he's always got to look over his shoulder for brendan lewis for owen mccown brian was saying maybe you just tell jt these two games you're the quarterback up until the bye week just to give him a shot no you're not buying in i feel bad for saying this because i i don't like being mean to kids but like he can't play like in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter all of the outside stuff. Is he he's not a division one Pac twelve quarterback. Uh and so I I understand the sympathy and I have sympathy for that. He hasn't really gotten a shot. But you have to earn these things. They're not given to you. And other than a couple throws against TCU before the half and that drive at the end of that game, he's not shown anything that makes me believe he can win games at this level. So I I get it. It's not the it's not the ideal way to treat a quarterback. I just don't think he can play. I think the case for it is that like the season just needs an arc to it, like a story to it. Like you you can't just run out there and say like, "Yeah, we're about to take nine more beatings. Everybody just Buckle down. Yeah. Buckle down. Here it comes. Yeah. If you say, okay, JT's the guy for the next two weeks, all of a sudden there's kind of like a storyline for those two weeks where you say like, okay, these are the JT weeks. There's a reevaluation in two weeks. Like there's something to watch for but in these games. My thing is like that ship has sailed. So now it's the Owen show. So yeah. Owen's the quarterback for the next two weeks. That's what I would be doing. If, if I was in charge – after that last game, I would have said, sorry, Carl, there's, there's a thing that happens. It's the same conversation we had with Darren Cheverini, where it's like, do you deserve it? Do you not deserve it? Whatever. That part doesn't even matter. You just look at the results. There's a thing that happens when that happens. Sorry, you're done. We've got to move on. And then I make Owen McCown the quarterback, just so that you have, again, some little glimmer of hope. But I do think maybe JT at least. And here's what, what I'll say. Keeps, there's a story two weeks from now. Yeah. Here's what I'll, it, to me, Brendan has been way better than JT. So if I'm mm. giving anyone the two weeks stretch, I'm giving it to Brendan. Um, but I'm going with Owen and I'm going to give him four, three more weeks just to see. And if nothing really changes, then you, it's very easy to tell Owen McCown, hey, dude, we don't want to waste your year on this mm-hmm. shit show that we have going right now. So while we believe you're the best option, we're going to sit you down. Now, you Carl Durrell is not going to do that. And so that's where you get in this weird situation where like you have like as Rick George, you have to start telling Carl Durrell what to do what's best for the program. Like 
mm-hmm. essentially orders. Mm-hmm. Because the same thing happened with Tyler Hansen uh, years ago with Dan Hawkins when, they, and this was before the four four game rule. This was you play once, yeah, you're Richard burn. burn. Yep. So mm-hmm. he came in one year, burned his redshirt. The next year, Cody Hawkins was the starter again, and it was like, okay, well, let's let's preserve Tyler's redshirt year. Well, things started going awry. Dan's job is on the line. He puts in Tyler, who, again, was a, a decent option at quarterback, burned his redshirt year again. And then when Embry comes in, it's his first year. But Tyler Hansen, who's actually a competent quarterback at this point, only has one year left of eligibility. Mm-hmm. It's that year. He plays decent. The team's bad. And then they're back to the drawing board. The next year, they have no one at quarterback. They win one game. Embry's fired. So you, as, as Rick George, have to start making decisions for the program at large and if owen mccown's actually good enough to win you games then you have to keep playing him if it's he's much better but they're still getting blown out then you have to say hey we got to preserve this i'm in on the owen mccown hype just to play a little devil's advocate here and something that brian talked about do you think that maybe playing owen too early would send a wrong message to the other quarterbacks in the room and you would end up with an even weaker quarterback room than you had last year i mean because if you play owen and you burn his red shirt this year you're basically saying he's the quarterback not only this year but for the future right mm-hmm. so it's possible that brendan could transfer jt could transfer maybe you see even drew carter transfer mm-hmm. is that a risk worth running you think uh, yes i mean hold like holding on to those guys just because they give you a better shot and your better shot is losing by 35 points doesn't really matter mm-hmm. um you obviously have to fill those spots and you're gonna have to do a good job recruiting transfer portal, whatever it is to bring in guys to give you some depth, but that's just the current world we live in in college football. And so I'd like to keep Brendan around. Um, You know, his story I think is still being written and he has always and does have the tools to be a decent college quarterback. Um, But more importantly, you have to worry about Owen McCown transferring. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and at this point, again, you know, I'm not even necessarily trying to hype up Owen McCown. I'm saying, I think he looked competent. <laughs> That's <laughs> the best <laughs> thing I can with it. Like exactly. There's so, a like, chance. Right now, he's the only person on this roster that I'm saying, yeah. From this very small sample that I have, he looks like he might be able to play ball in college, mm-hmm. and. That's your most important priority is keeping that around because as far as I'm concerned, for now, you have one of those on the roster. Here's what I'm more worried about, though. I, th- I think he's more likely to transfer if he plays and plays all right. Because I think right now, you know, you, you, you don't play him again. Say he doesn't play at all. And he says, you know what? I'm out of here. I want to hit the portal. He's still a skinny kid with almost no tape. And, and the reasons that he wound up at Colorado still kind of stand, you know, 160 pounds or whatever. Who, who knows exactly? If you let him go out there and prove that he's a good quarterback and, you know, he is able to win you one or two games, if, if there's another option, how would he not take it? You're going to have a new coach, and it's that new coach's job to re-recruit him. Yep. And, I mean, I understand what you're saying, Henry, but – at the point you're at right now, what's to stop every single player on the roster from transferring? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, not to get too dark yeah. about it, but the truth is, everyone could be looking around doing that. Charlie Offerdahl looked kind of nice last week. Like, what's to stop him from saying, I want to go play for Air Force? Mm-hmm. That looks sick. Speaking you of know? that, though, I did see Anthony Hankerson was practicing today. Yep. He's nasty. He Coach said that he is in play for this weekend. Alex Fontenot looks like he's going to be out again. Yep. He's he is a good back. He's only a freshman, so who knows? But that is, he. I, I think I'd be more excited to see him than Owen McCown, just because I still have some doubts about like the size and just whether any quarterback could look good. He's the one. Do you remember when we played uh, Guess the Quote that uh, yeah. Darian Hagen <laughs> uh, compared to Eric Bieniemy? Yep, <laughs> that's exciting. None of it matters if you don't have a quarterback. So oh, I'm, yeah. I'm against you on that one, Henry. Okay. Um, what I don't want to see is Owen McCown just being thrown into this, not by any of their fault, but like this clown car of quarterbacks where yep. they're just like, mm-hmm. roll it out there, see who falls out of the passenger side. That's who's the quarterback on this drive. Like, make a decision. Right. You you know, no one has more information on this than Carl Durrell. So all we heard, you know, Henry, even going back to when you were still covering the team was, 
This McCown kid. Yeah. Can kind of sling it. Yeah. Which, when, you know, he's just a true freshman and you think you ha- might have an answer in JT Shrout, makes sense to say, like, okay, yeah, but, like, not this year. At this point, just pull the trigger and say he's our starting quarterback moving forward and give him a shot. At least do week by week. At least say, like, you know what, this is a whoever week. Yeah. It's like he's he's the guy. If he runs with it, he runs with it. If not, maybe we'll reevaluate. But you just need – what's the... For Carl Durrell specifically, what would be his case for – seeing what Owen McCown did and not saying like, I think he gives me the best chance to win this week. The arm did not look the strongest. We'll throw it out there. You know, those first couple balls are hitting guys in the feet. It kind of reminded me of Drew Carter getting in last year, but again, like still so much to like still more than any of the others, but it's like moving around, staying yeah. in, the, in throwing lanes. And... It, it was maybe just a little bit frantic yes, in the moving yes, around, yes. but it, it worked out. I'm totally with you. Like you have to, you have to try something, right? Like, there's, just, there's massive cases against anybody. I, you know, sometimes I try to understand that the coach's job is different than our job. Mm-hmm. I just, I cannot see a scenario where he's like, yep, got to go back to JT Shrout this week. Uh, that would be a rough one. We'll see, though. We'll table this discussion until after the weekend and after the Buffs play UCLA. Let's go to a different side of the ball, the other side of the ball, I should say. Uh, Darren Chevalrini, now the offensive coordinator at UCLA. Um, so there's a storyline there that we can follow. But also this is defense. He I think he's an analyst. Oh, is he an analyst? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's my mistake. Um, but also defensively for the Buffs, this rushing attack, or they've been victimized by offensive rushing attacks. They are now leading, or I guess leading is the wrong word, bottom of the nation in terms of run defense, averaging close to 350 yards per game. The next closest is Louisiana Tech with 249 yards per game, guys. I mean, you said it before the show. It's kind of a product of just the out-of-conference schedule and who they played. Yeah, I mean... Air Force, you just throw that out anytime. Right. Minnesota happens to be second to Air Force in rushing the ball, and they were coming into the game against Colorado. <laughs> um, and the one that's very damning is TCU, because that is a team that wants to run the air raid. And they came out of halftime and said, why would we throw the ball? They cannot stop us from running it. And they were right. And that's why that game turned into a blowout. So that's the one game that I look to and say, okay, the evidence says this team cannot stop the run because a team that wants to throw the ball on every play decided, nah, we'll just run it. Um, That's that's rough. And, I mean, in these last two games, they look helpless against the run. In a lot of scenarios. Against... uh, Air Force, they did have a couple nice series where they were making plays, mm-hmm. um, but the same cannot be said uh, for for Minnesota. You just wonder why, like Terrence Lang, Jalen Sami, yep. like you've got the veterans all over the edge groups. Guy Thomas looked really good. Yes, he did. I mean, then you throw in Josh Chandler, Tomato, Quinn Perry's had his moments. Like, it's it's a little surprising to look at that front seven and say like, mm-hmm. worst in the country. <laughs> By a significant margin. Again, like it's Minnesota. They run the ball a lot. It's Air Force, obviously. But, I mean, there's also a lot of teams in the country. There's like 130 teams that you're running up against. Like, it's not even like, ah, uh, yeah, you know, they're they're down there. It's like, no, you are dead last yep. by a significant amount. And well, now you're going up against Zach Charbonnet exactly. and DTR. That's where I was going. Keegan Jones last week, too, the junior running back, uh, replacing Britton Brown as the uh-huh. other rotational guy. He went off for 14, I said went off, 14 carries, 65 yards. Um, he was decent on the ground. I think Charbonnet's a little banged up, though, coming in this week, so okay. we'll see. Um, but I don't, what do we set the over-under at here? Well, first 200? of all, it should be noted, UCLA almost lost to South Alabama. They did. Mm-hmm. And South Alabama had an opportunity to kick a field goal in that game to, I believe, make it a, a, a – t- they, w- they would have made it so UCLA needed to score a touchdown to beat them. They decided to go fake and got sacked. And it was like, man, they must just really not trust their kicker. That's the only thing I could think of. Uh, and then um, UCLA goes down and kicks the game-winning field goal. But they almost lost to South Alabama. Yep. So that should be kept in mind for better or for worse. Um, what was your question originally? Sorry. Um, honestly, I can't remember. At okay. This, oh, okay. Over under uh, for rushing this week. 200 is that i mean is that too low even i'd take the over yeah i think it's a fair place to put it you'd probably end up getting a lot of action on the over and (laughs) yeah (laughs) uh, i mean ucla 
again, and sometimes you get these coaches who outsmart themselves, um, which is how Colorado won their one game in that last year for, for John Embry is Mike Leach was like, nope, we're the air raid team. I don't care that we're up three scores in the fourth quarter. We're throwing it. Um, and so, you know, you hope that maybe Chip Kelly outsmarts himself a little bit and just says, like, no, we're going to run our offense. If he's smart, he'll say, we could just run zone read every play the entire game and probably still win. Uh, I mean, with DTR and Charbonnet uh, and Keegan Jones, may as well. Um, let's transition to the Pac-12. Before, though, I'm going to talk about Breckenridge Brewery. Hank, you're drinking a Broncos country all right now. I am. Uh, football season is back, and Mile High is ready to see – what this new look Broncos team has in store, um, it's been shaky so far to say the best. You know Breck Brew has you covered with the hometown craft beer of the Denver Broncos, Broncos Country Pale Ale. Show off that col- colorful Colorado legacy with the Orange Crush logo and 100% Colorado ingredients. This will be your go-to for football season. Very crushable. Check out the beer locator at www.breckbrew.com to find a Broncos Country Pale Ale near you. All right, guys, we're opening up Pac-12 conference play this week. All 12 teams are in action, and they all play against each other. Uh, we'll get to the Colorado game last. So we're going to start off here. Uh, I think it's a 2 p.m. kickoff on the Pac-12 network. Number 15, Oregon, is traveling to Washington State. Hmm. Only six-and-a-half-point favorites Oregon are. Uh, Washington State a couple weeks ago had that big upset over Wisconsin. Um, this is road Bo Nix, though. The home and away splits are drastically different away uh, compared to home, he played really nice last week. Yep. Five total touchdowns. They're six and a half point favorite, guys. What side are you on? Give me the Cougs. I'll take Love the Ducks. It. Like, I get the argument. I just, a touchdown with that much talent, I think so. Yeah, for me, it's more the Cougs are a legitimate football team this mm-hmm. year. Um, maybe even a little better than that. Yep. And. It's that Pacific North. It's essentially a rivalry game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that Pacific Northwest rivalry, and they got it at home. I'll, I'll go with the Cougs on the Palouse. Yeah, I think I'm going to take the Cougars also. Uh, next one, we have Arizona. Our guy Jaden Delora and Jacob Cowing traveling to Cal. Cal actually three point favorites in this one. They are the home team. So, your thoughts? Um, Jaden Delora. That's my only thought. Wow. <laughs> uh, I. Love watching him play football, and I made a bunch <laughs> of money on him pulling off the comeback against North Dakota the other Let's night. Let's go. Huge um, win, North Dakota actually. State. Yeah, it was a huge win. Um, I saw someone saying it's like the biggest Pac-12 non-conference win in years, which is, <laughs> I don't even know if it's true. It's just it embarrassing be. that someone said it. I mean, Ohio State last year with Oregon. That's true. There you go. Oh, yeah. There's okay. one right there. That's obvious. Um, either way, uh, I, I am just absolutely uh in love with Jaden Delora so I'm betting on him I've been uh I was like the one Arizona hater all summer I was like oh look at the additions look at that it's like nah I think they still stuck I'm gonna stick with that one more week okay I'm I'm gonna take Cal here if Arizona actually does cover this though then I'll I'll flip around what was the line again uh Three. three Cal is favored by three let's go baby yeah I think I'm gonna side with the Wildcats also Next one, uh, this is a great matchup. I think this is probably the, my favorite matchup of the weekend in the Pac-12. Number seven, USC uh, traveling to Corvallis to play Oregon State. The Trojans only six-point favorites in this one. Oregon State beat the hell out of Montana State last week, yeah. even though they did play. They played really tough against the Beavers. Um, this Beavers team, though, is pretty explosive. They're much improved mm-hmm. on the offensive side of the ball. They're what do you guys think? Really well coached. Uh, and that being said, man, I feel like. The Washington game last week over Michigan State is such a wake-up call for me. It happens every football season. You think you see a line that the book got yeah. wrong, and the book almost always got it right. Uh, and that was one where it's like, they're favorites mm-hmm. to them? And they just beat the shit out of them. Um, so I'm going to say that the book is on to something here. Oregon State keeps it close. Wow. I was also like a USC hater, but I think I'm bought in now. Yeah. That offense, ugh, it's just, I, I, I don't love it. That would be wrong. But it is just nice to see West Coast football mm-hmm. actually work. And so I think, I think I'm bought into them right now. I get the Oregon State stuff for sure, though. I just, one touch, and I think USC does it. Yeah, I think I'm going to take the Trojans too. Go ahead. So USC is starting to get national love. Mm-hmm. And because of that, they are a um, college football playoff candidate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's just, that doesn't it doesn't work like that for the Pac-12. Uh, whenever that happens, <laughs> yeah. you fall right on your face, 
and embarrass yourself. So maybe this is the week. Uh, maybe. I mean, traveling to play the Beavers, this is a tough one. I mean, Fresno State moved the ball. They didn't really get points. Of course, Hayner went down last week for Fresno State. That's um, But they were moving the ball on the Trojans. The Trojans just have the ability to kind of make turnovers and get some points on that side of the ball too. I, I took you, uh, Fresno State live plus 13 and a half. Two plays later, Hayner was out. Oh. I was just like, I just – Take my money now. I was and all me. over USC on that one. Nice. All over them. Got um, lucky. Next <laughs> one. Injury. Next one. Number 13, Utah, traveling to Arizona State. Uh, I believe their running back coach is the interim head coach at Arizona State. The Utes are 15 and a half point favorites traveling to Phoenix or Tempe, I should say. This is Oklahoma, Nebraska all over again. Um, you know, you fire your coach, you have to play a much more talented team and a better coach team, and you get blown out. Utes by a million. Yeah. I want to – here's my conspiracy theory. So, like, the Athletic today had whatever story with whatever anonymous the conspiracy source. one? Yeah. Yeah, that was juicy, huh? Yeah. The anonymous source said – Basically, any intel that you wanted on Arizona State was easy to get because people there wanted Herm gone. Lies. Yeah. See, I I, that, I, I agree. But when, I was, I'm was i very When tempted. the head coach gets fired, all the assistants get fired too. Yep. Unless it's above the assistants. It could be. Yeah. It could have been someone in the someone. athletic department that's not on the coaching staff. Or a couple of them. But yeah, there's a part of me that wants to think like, okay, there's no more leaks. Like, there's no more leaks. They're actually going to figure some stuff out. But, no, I mean, Utah minus 16, you wonder if this is one of those games where they just run the ball a lot and the clock goes and they, they lean on the defense and there's, like, two punts and a turnover. But but I'll I'll, I'll take them to win by 16. Uh, last weekend was really ugly for the Sun Devils. Eastern Michigan's running back ran for, like, 200 yards on them. I'm going to take Utah. Uh, I think, Ryan, you hit it uh, I watched, perfectly on the read. I watched the PHNX Sun Devils post game show after oh. that. It was actually hilarious. Those guys, they were able to have a good time with that. Oh, good. Yeah. You love to see that. Um, just like we're doing here with the Buffs. Yep. Um, last one before we get to this weekend's game Stanford Cardinal traveling to Washington. Michael Penix, guys. Wow. Between um, him, Owen McCown, two is balling. <laughs> so re- it's revenge of the lefties. Lefty season? Yep. Uh, the Huskies are 13 and a half point favorites over Stanford at home. Your guys' thoughts. I got to go Huskies on this one. Uh, I, I, if you were to go 14 and a half, maybe I have to think about it a little more, but I think that that's a really good football team. I see. My thing is I'm not that far. I'm not ready to say they're a really good football team. And yeah, I thought, thought Stanford figure it out. You know, there's that like conservative ball, like what they lost 41 28 or whatever to usc tender mckee's been playing well You're like yeah i mean yeah they have those pieces i just can't i just can't do it i just can't do it like washington is better than stanford and i think it's enough to cover especially at home right mm-hmm. they're home yep. yeah yeah i think about this one a lot uh more hard if it was stanford at home but i think i'll take the huskies also yeah. all right guys let's wrap it up then ucla travels to Folsom field to play the buffs this weekend Early kickoff at noon, uh, the first game in a Pac-12 network triple header this weekend. Woo-hoo. UCLA, 21-point <laughs> favorites. I can't, I can't do it. I mean, they can't score. If you tell me that Owen McCown is the, is the starting quarterback and he's going to have a long leash, then maybe I could say, okay, the Buffs score enough to stay in this game. But it's... It's been the same story. Uh, this week was a little bit different, but I think you're going to see the same story of week one and week two. The defense fights and claws and scratches to keep you in the game as long as they can, and eventually the floodgates break open and your offense isn't able to score you enough points to stay in the game. And I think what what ends up is something along the lines of like 31-7. Hank? I'd say it's more like, like 45-6, 45-9. Getting across midfield three times sounds tough, though. I mean, you got to you gotta take UCLA to cover. It, it, there isn't much more to it than that. Yep. I picked the buffs the last three weeks. I'm jumping shit, boys. It's time to <laughs> actually try and make some money, I guess, on the buffs in one way or another. Um, any final thoughts before we head out? No. Uh, smart move. Smart move. Jumping ship. Maybe all of, all of our collective power of, like, just thinking this is going to be too easy for UCLA, we'll flip it the other way, there and you go. the Buffs will stay in the game. 
All right. I'll be there. And, uh, all right. I'll, I do have one final thought. Ooh, go ahead. I don't think that boycotting the games is beneficial to to yeah. anyone in any way. That mm-hmm. just makes things worse. Exactly. Um, now, you know, you could say the tickets are already sold, so it's not going to take money out of the pockets of the AD. And, I, and to be fair, anyone who doesn't have season tickets, I cannot expect them to pay money that they haven't spent yet to go see this team. But I really don't think that avoiding the games uh, helps anything. They know. The, the athletic <laughs> department knows that yeah. everyone wants fi- <laughs> to fire the head coach. You're uh-huh. not sending any sort of message. You're not really getting across any sort of like, we expect better. Everyone knows. Everyone knows. You're not going to send. They're trying. They're going to try to do it. Mm-hmm. The better way is to not only show up to the game and spend your money in the concessions. If you want them to be fired, write a check. Yeah. Now, I know I'm not capable of writing a meaningful check, and I'm sure a lot of other people aren't, and people want to know what can I do. Keep voicing your concerns, you know, do that thing. But boycotting the games, I really don't think is is beneficial. And I, at least for me, it is important to go support those guys who chose to come here. Mm-hmm. Um, and whether it's Owen McCown or someone else, like, I don't want them looking into the stands and saying, man, why would I stay here? Yep. My, uh, my final thought is that CSU is going to lose to an FCS team this Saturday. So that's going to be a Who lot of Who are they playing? Fun. South Dakota? S- Sacramento State. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Buffs have lost to them before. I bet. Yeah, they won the Big Sky John last Embriera. year. John oh, Embriera. Rams lost to an FCS team last year, too. That's South a, Dakota State. It's a trend, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks so much for doing the show today. It was great to have both of you in here. Uh, we'll be back on Friday. Full deep dive and preview for the UCLA game. Until then, Sco Buffs. Sco Buffs. Mm-hmm.